Hi, and welcome to Smelling Coffee TV. It's the blog SmellingCoffee.com live and a ministry of First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Mississippi. I'm Jennifer Walker, and I'm so glad you joined us today. I'm here with our new minister to students at First Baptist Cleveland, Frank Vaughn. And Frank, we're so glad to have you not only in our church, but also in our studio today. So thank you for joining us. Yes, ma'am. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I wanted you to tell us about yourself and about your family. They've been here one month as of this recording, and it literally feels like y'all have been here a long time already. I feel just so blessed. To, I feel like I've known you for a long time. And, and I will tell them this, that you, you and your wife both grew up with our pastor and his yeah. wife, Brad and Deanna. And um, I think that's kind of cool. And, and Frank did uh, the Disciple Now for our youth a couple of years ago, and I had children in the youth, and they, the, youth, the kids loved him then. And so we've just, we've got you now for good. Right. So we're glad about that. So tell us about yourself and your family. And Yep, so uh, I grew up in, uh, in Winona, Mississippi. So as most people from the Delta call it, the hills. So not too far from here, about an hour and 15 minutes. And I uh, went to Winona High School and, and uh, before moving to Winona, I lived actually right across a pasture from Deanna, Brad's wife. And so we spent a lot of time growing up together and playing together. And uh, one of us or both of us was always running across that pasture in between our houses to spend time with each other. And uh, our uh, parents were friends as well. So that made it, made it kind of, we kind of were going to be friends because of our parents. And so uh, just growing up there and, and uh, spent a lot of time with Brad too. Brad and I were, were great friends in high school. And so um, that's kind of a little bit about our backstory and how Brad and I played on a lot of sports teams together, baseball and football, and uh, we're always at some type of ball game. And so um, that's kind of kind of how we got to know them and, and how we knew them and how, how the Lord led us here is, is uh, just through some conversations, a lot of prayer, and, uh, and uh, we're so thankful to be here. But like you said, I, I feel like you do. It's, uh, I have to remind myself, man, you've, you've really only been here about a month. But yeah. you get to know people and start spending time with people, and uh, we, we're just so thankful God allowed us to be here and allowed us to serve here on staff. Okay, so tell us about your walk with the Lord. Tell us, uh, so kind of give us your testimony yeah. and how you got called uh, into the ministry. I would love to. So I grew up, uh, like I said, in Winona, and uh, my, I've got some great parents. Both of my parents love the Lord. And uh, my grandmother actually uh, was a missionary in Honduras, so she spent some time uh, serving oh. there. And, and so we always heard about the Lord. Um, we were never pressured into making a decision for the Lord, but we did hear about the Lord often. And, uh, and so uh, I had to have a story like, like a lot of kids. Uh, I was nine years old and uh, went to vacation Bible school at North Winona Baptist Church. That's where, where I grew up uh, going to church. And so uh, went to my grandmother and actually had a conversation with her and said, hey, I'd love to learn how to, uh, I feel like the Lord was, was speaking to my heart. The Holy Spirit was drawing me in. And so I went to her and said, hey, I'd love to have a conversation with our pastor about Jesus. And so she set that up and then after Vacation Bible School, one, uh, one day I went to his office and uh, had a conversation with him and he led me to the Lord. And uh, that was when I was nine years old. Uh, and so very, very thankful for Frank Bishop. He was the pastor that led me to the Lord. Um, fast forward it several, several years. I spent a lot of time in church. Uh, I was very involved in children's ministry as a, as a child, also in student ministry there. And I got to, got to know our student pastor, Bob Bailey, very well. Spent a lot of time with him and uh, every once in a while, I would get the opportunity to, to do small devotionals and, and even small things like pray in church and pray in the student ministry. And through all of that, God began to uh, speak to my heart about, about what my future might be like in, in, in you know, serving in ministry. And um, it was actually at camp uh, at uh, Centrifuge in Ridgecrest, North Carolina, uh, when I was about 14 years old, that I began to feel the Holy Spirit leading me into ministry. Had no idea what that looked wow. like. Um, obviously my first thought was student ministry because that was really what I knew or what I thought I knew. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I came home and shared that with my parents. And uh, it was through the next several years that, um, that God began to grow that desire in my heart to lead students toward Jesus and lead college students toward Jesus. And so uh, uh, began serving uh, any, in any way I could. When I ended up going to college at a Holmes Community College in Goodman, Mississippi. Uh, the metropolis of Goodman, yes. Mississippi, and, uh, and loved being there. Um, did you play to, sports there? I, I did. I ended up playing soccer there. Uh, it was the only sport that I felt like still allowed me to have somewhat of a life. Uh -huh. And so I did. I played college soccer there and, and loved, loved doing that. But I was also involved in a Baptist student union there. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, through some conversations with the director there, um, she uh, had mentioned that there was a church that needed a student pastor and I needed some extra money. Sure. <laughs> and so I said, yeah, I'll do it. I'd love to do that. And so I ended up serving on staff there. And it was at, at that point that I really believe the Lord uh, really revealed that, hey, Frank, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to devote, devote your life to. And so um, that was about 15 years ago. And so for about the past 15 years, um, we've served in several di different capacities in ministry and, uh, again, are just so thankful that God has brought us to First Baptist Cleveland. Wow, we so. are too. We are too. I asked Frank if he would uh, share with you a uh, favorite Bible passage or, or something, and, and we're going to do that in just a minute. We're going to take a little break in just a second. But before we go on a break, uh, I want to ask you to share something um, Funny, well, I want to tell you something sweet, uh, okay. and I've, I already told him this, but I want to tell you something sweet. Deanna, our preacher's wife, that grew up with Frank, said that Frank was always a light of Christ in her life, always, and that's a sweet, sweet thing. But uh, I want you to tell tell us a story about Brad and Deanna growing up. So, so I will. I don't, I don't <laughs> have too many funny stories about Brad, because Brad was always <laughs> like a just a straight laced kind of guy, awesome guy to be around, very encouraging. Uh, we had a lot of fun Are together. Are you gonna tell the horse story? Well, about yes, I am. And, and I, I, I don't wanna get in trouble for, for telling this, so we may need to edit this later. No. Uh, but I will say that, so again, where we lived, uh, Deanna was my neighbor and there was a huge pasture between our houses and so I would, I would go see her and she had, she had horses and she had a huge red barn behind their house and so, <laughs> Um, I always wanted to to learn how to ride horses and to do that. You know, I went through that little phase of life, and and she had a pony, and it was a small small pony. And I remember going over there, and and uh, she was getting ready to ride the horse or something, and and I told her that I wanted to ride her pony, and uh, she told me that I could not ride the pony because I was too fat. <laughs> Was always the yeah. light of Christ to her, but yeah. Yeah. And, and then understand now. Listen, we're young. We're like four, four years old at this point, and uh, and I was chunky. I mean, I had to, I had to, I had to lay down on the ground to button my pants. That's how, that's how, that's how large, I, large and in charge I was. And I was like, I don't know, three feet tall, 175 pounds or something. So, but she had every right to say that. And, and I'm, I'm seeking counseling as we speak. I'm going to lay on the couch in a little while to. To get, to get some help with that. So Deanna, if you're watching, yeah. I hope you will let Frank ride a horse yeah. one day. We're going to get a horse up here for we you to should. ride. Well, we need actually, to. She actually says that she's not sure that's how it happened, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. So. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and you're going to see a promotional video. Frank is going to share with us his uh, favorite Bible passage and uh, share a little devotional now. So, Frank, take it away for us. Yeah, I'd love to. So, one of my favorite passages of Scripture actually comes from Joshua chapter 1, 
uh, verse 9. And in this passage, this is kind of God commissioning Joshua after Moses uh, has, has left. And, and in this passage, uh, what we see here, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Uh, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, this is one of my favorite passages because it's just a great reminder that no matter what's going on in this world, no matter how crazy it is, no matter uh, how busy we may get, uh, our focus should always be on the fact that God wants us to be courageous. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be focused. Um, when it comes to student ministry, our my wife's heart and my heart are both that uh, every student, no matter how old they are, no matter where they are in life, no matter what season they're in, also no matter whether they're a believer in Jesus at this point or not, has always been that the students would uh, take the next step in their faith, take their next step. And we say, well, Frank, what, what does that look like? Well, it looks like it looks different from other, from every, for everybody. Uh, it looks different for everybody. And that is uh, that they would be the next step toward Jesus. So for the non-believer, it's to come to faith in Christ. Uh, for the believer, it's to grow deeper in their faith. It's to study more. It's to share their faith more. Um, maybe for the believer that has just given their life to Jesus, it's taking the next step toward tithing or, uh, or toward um, leading their family toward Christ. And so for the student ministry, for both college, middle school, and high school, um, we've made it really, really simple. Is that, what, Frank, what do you want for the students here? And it's always to take the next step toward Jesus. Um, so that's, that's what our heart is, and that's what we desire to see. And, and we see that in a lot of different ways in our students, whether it's uh, us encouraging them to pray at lunch. I mm -hmm. say, oh, man, I can't do that. Well, find you another friend, and y'all do that together. Mm -hmm. uh, or if there's somebody you're sitting next to in class, and uh, you want to do something which may seem so small, but just invite them to church. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're having student ministry tonight at our church. It's called The Movement. We would love for you to come and be a part of it. We're going to have a great time, and we're going to learn more about the Lord. Uh, little things like that, or for, with our college ministry. We, we feed our college ministry guys and girls every uh, Tuesday night, and so maybe it's, hey, would you like a free meal? Mm -hmm. And maybe the free meal gets them in the door to, uh, to worship the Lord, to hear a message based on biblical truth. Uh, so it's always taking the next step toward Jesus and whatever that may look like. And that's really our heart for, for student ministry and for the church. What does the movement mean? How, how did you come uh, up with that name? Yeah, so the movement, we believe the Christian life is active. Uh, we believe disciples are moving. Uh, so many people give their life to the Lord, and they, in and, and doing that, they're taking just a step over the starting line. Mm -hmm. But so many people stop there, mm -hmm. and they don't go anywhere else. And they're like, well, I've, I've, I've given my life to Jesus, but, and that's all I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant remind, reminder to me as the leader is, Frank, are you, where are you moving people toward? Who are you moving people toward? Um, and so it's just, a, like I said, another reminder that we are pursuing Jesus, that we're continually growing in our faith, and that um, we're not simply managers of life where we want everything to kind of just flow, but we want it to flow in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. And so the movement is all about that. It's about moving closer to the Lord. Well, talk to our listeners and our, our viewers about that. Um, if they're not <clears throat> students, but what if they're in their 50s? Yeah. What does that look like? Or if they're in their 70s or 80s, what yeah. does that movement so, look like? So for our, for our student ministry, uh, our student ministry is for everyone, uh -huh. and uh, what I mean by that is, is there's a place for anybody. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Frank, man, I would love to, to be a part of what you're doing. I'd love to be a part of the vision of the ministry. Then I say, man, we would love to have you. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that people can come and volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different ways that people can come and serve, whether it be a small group leader um, who is facilitating conversations based on a message that they've heard on Wednesday night. Um, whether it's uh, serving at one of our, uh, our different outreach ministries. We had a fifth quarter here uh, last Friday night that was just phenomenal, and we could not have done that had we not had uh, some great guys and girls come out and serve. Mm -hmm. um, we probably had 150 to 200 students show up, and myself and our intern, Austin, we could not have done that alone. Mm -hmm. And so we have guys like, uh, like Philip, who's helping us out today, that shows up every Sunday night, every Wednesday, and all, is always doing something to help us out in student ministry. Um, so we always need people. And so uh, so for anybody that would be interested in joining the movement and helping us out, we've always got to always That's have awesome. a spot for you. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, tell us a little bit about your family. We didn't get to talk yep. a lot about that. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so I've, I've been married for a little over 15 years to my beautiful wife, Amy. Um, she grew up just down the road from, from me in Winona. Uh, she grew up in Kilmichael. 
And, uh, and, and so went to the same school we together. didn't. Okay. She went to French Camp Academy, mm -hmm. which is a, a, an amazing school, and I went to one on a high school. Oh, okay. um, so how we met was uh, she. I, I always kind of knew her from just from growing up in small town Mississippi, um, but she actually needed a dance partner, and uh, and she took dance for like sixteen years. And uh, her dance teacher decided they were going to do like this couples dance thing for uh, for for their deal they were going to do at the end of the year, and so she. Uh, and you were a dancer? Uh, well, I mean, you look at me and you don't think that, but right, listen. You, you said you were three feet I, tall I, I, and three feet yeah, tall. Yeah, but I grew a little bit. Okay. I've gotten a little bit taller, okay? And if you jiggle this, it keeps moving, okay? So, uh, but no, I, I, so she called me one night and said, hey, Frank, uh, I'm needing a dance partner for an upcoming recital we're going to do. Would you like to be my partner? And I knew she was cute. Uh -huh. And so I didn't even have to think about it. Uh -huh. So I said, yes, I would love to be your dance partner. And so um, that's kind of how our relationship kicked off. She needed a partner. I was there. And uh, it's funny how God used all that to, to bring us together. Um, we have three beautiful little girls, uh, Haven, Leighton, and Caroline. And uh, they are just the, the light of our lives. And they goodness, we're, we're so blessed to have them. It's crazy because... Um, we weren't. We we were told that it would have to be a miracle of the Lord for us to have kids. Really? Yeah. So uh, it was a seven-year period there where we were just praying and praying and praying and asking God to, to please bless us with children. And so uh, Haven is eight years old now. Wow. And so God blessed us with three beautiful kids, and we're we just love them to death. And they, and they are some of the best kids, honestly. I I hearts. truly have ever met. They yeah. are kind. They are, y'all have done a great job with them. Well, they are thoughtful. They are generous. That. My wife is, my wife is just an amazing <laughs> wife and mother. And uh, we're so thankful she gets to stay home and, and homeschool. And, and uh, she's just, she's a rock star. So, yeah. Um, but we, yeah, we, I've got three little girls who are rambunctious. And they, can <laughs> they be, all have their own personalities. They do. They it's really great. do. And they're all outgoing. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's so funny because we'll, at night, we, we, uh, we pray over them. And, uh, and so it's funny just listening because our, our prayers for each child are so different. And, uh, but goodness, we, we're just, we're blessed to be parents and to have kids. And, and uh, so that's just a little bit about our family. They're sweet. So. Well, um, let's see, do you have any uh, encouragement maybe that you could offer? We, uh, our show is watched by people, a lot of people that uh, stay at home that are not able to come out and go to church. They watch our show on Sunday mornings. And then um, the show is watched by, uh, I joke and say tens of people everywhere, but uh, <laughs> maybe more than that through YouTube there and you people. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we have just a wide range of viewers. Um, and so do you have any word of encouragement from the scripture to share with our viewers before uh, we close? I definitely do. And, and one verse comes to mind is, is pray without ceasing. That is something that we all can do. And, and that's something that, uh, that sometimes we take for granted and maybe we don't really think about it. Because I think the average Christian prays two minutes a day. That's two. Two minutes a day. Yeah. And you start to think, okay, what does that look like? When do we pray? When do we get ready to eat? Yeah. It's like, you know, hey, let's all pray. Thank you, God, for our food, you know. And, and, and so for the Christian, I don't think we really tap into that. And so for the ones that are at home and, and, and may even have the mindset of is, you know, I can't really get out. There's not much I can do. I can't, you know, move around as like I used to. I would say the biggest thing you can do is pray and, uh, you know, pray for our country, pray for our leaders, uh, you know, pray for believers in Jesus. Pray for believers in Jesus around the world. Uh, you know, uh, this is this is a lot of dark times for a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Uh, and so I would say, just pray. Just man, we we could always use your prayer, especially us here on staff at the church, and and you with the ministry that you have. Is uh, is we would covet your prayers um, as you beat down the doors of heaven. Uh, on behalf of those around you. So that's what I would, that would be some encouragement. So that that's a huge ministry. It is not a Definitely. light, um, if you can't do anything else, pray. It's a right. huge, huge ministry sure. of prayer. That's right. Okay, well, Frank, thank you for uh, joining us today. And uh, we've tossed about, <clears throat> we've been talking about maybe Frank and, and me doing a couple of different kind of shows together, maybe a little... Um, more current event type or whatever talk right. shows together. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep talking about that. I think that would be fun. We may get into a little trouble doing that, though. We might. <laughs> we might have horses up here. <laughs> oh, and, uh... <laughs> goodness. Can we bring Deanna in to, to let her tell I her side so. of the story? Yes, yes, we Maybe will. We, we might need to do that. She will not get on camera, though. She told me she would not get on camera, but she might have to come defend herself on That's this right. one. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much for having me. I'm though. glad you did. I'm glad you came. Would you close us in prayer? Speaking sure of will. prayer. I All sure right. Uh, Father God. 
Uh, we cannot thank you enough for your grace, for your mercy, Lord, for your love for us, your kids. Uh, God, we want to pray, uh, Lord, that right now, God, that, uh, that the people that are watching this, Lord, would be blessed. Holy Spirit, that you would speak to hearts um, all across this, this great nation, Lord, all across the globe. God, thank you for your mercy and your grace again, God. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we hope you will join us again on Smelling Coffee TV. You can find us on the YouTube channel, Smelling Coffee TV. Hope you join uh, us at our church website at understeeple.com. And thank you uh, for being with us today where we always seek the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in every place. May God bless you, and we'll see you next time.